Hey Jules Bliss Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So I titled this Don't Give Up Before the Miracle. Keep the end in mind. And oh my gosh people that is so incredibly important. You know I don't know how you're going to get there. Inevitably there will be setbacks. People will flounder their way. But keeping the end goal in mind and accepting the process on the way, I can definitely give people hope, you know, to not give up before the miracle because miracles are just waiting to happen. I, I felt really badly. I was watching my 600 pound life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and like, really? And are there better things to think about? But you know, that's a reality check for me because I joke, uh, that when I see a very obese person, that's me one week from now, uh, depending on how I choose to eat and approach my life. And I know that because I know that my body will absolutely accommodate any food that I eat and happily gain weight. I mean, I never thought I could be heavier than 150 and definitely not bigger than 179. And oh my goodness, there's no way I'll ever hit 200. <laughs> and I kept that delusion all the way to 330 pounds when I was not going to weigh myself anymore and in fact couldn't. Uh, because most scales won't even go above that unless it's like a meat scale or something. Um, so I was acutely aware that my body would happily accommodate all the nonsense I was willing to give it. So I do watch those sometimes, you know, the 600 pound life. And mostly it's a chance for me to really pray for those people. And this one girl, I, uh, it was a woman, but I think her name was Bethany. And Unfortunately, you know, she weighed in at 608, which I was surprised. I actually thought she weighed much more, um, but she weighed in at 608. And, you know, in some way she had just decided that that weight loss surgery was going to be a quick fix. And the doctor kept saying, you know, this is just one tool. You have to continue to work um, at it or you will inevitably gain your weight back. You can stretch your stomach back out, which... A lot of people don't realize, I remember when I was a little girl, um, my father had a secretary who had weight, um, you know, stomach staples, they used to call it stapling your stomach. And uh, she had had that surgery and it was much more rare, you know, this was like 40 years ago, honestly. And yeah, over time she stretched it right back out and was as obese as ever. Because of course there has to be behavior changes, you know. People want the end goal, but they don't want to do the footwork to get to it. They don't want the discipline that it takes to maintain that once you do get there. And so this girl, you know, went ahead through that surgery. There's nothing comfortable or easy about that. I have a friend who, after that surgery, you know, suddenly had to have gallbladder surgery. And then they had to have, you know, another surgery. Like it just became this whole thing. And it's with the best of intentions that people finally get to the place where they want to choose wellness, but there are no cheap ways out. There aren't any. And in this case, this Bethany person was distraught that she wasn't getting the, res you know, the results that she wanted. And, you know, she was so proud of herself before the surgery, you're required to lose some weight. And in her case, she needed to lose 60 pounds. She ended up losing 55 without surgery, hello, just with the discipline of herself. But then she decided that the surgery was going to do the rest. And she had that surgery and um, should have lost a significant amount because like the first month is just liquid. And she only lost like 14 pounds. And then over the next couple of months, of course, again, it was expected that close to surgery that she would be successful. Not only did she only lose four pounds like the next month, but she actually gained six pounds the following month. And the doctor kept saying, you know, you really need to see a therapist. You have issues, which she absolutely denied. She decided that it was all other people's problems and that she was handling it and that her solution was to trust herself. Well, if she could trust herself, she wouldn't be in the situation she was in. She obviously did not have tools 
or would not have been in that predicament. So sadly, she ended up going back to the doctor before the year mark, I think it was at nine months, and said, yeah, thanks for your services, I'm done. Your process hasn't worked for me. And so I was praying for her, and I have no idea who she is, and I don't even know when her story was told, but I was praying for her because I get it. People give up before the miracle. And again, part of it is because they can't even remember. They can't remember feeling free in their body. They can't remember feeling well. What this girl kept proclaiming again and again was that food was her best friend, that food was her solution to everything, that food was her comfort, that she couldn't get through without food. And finally she was like, if I'm not getting results, I might as well go back to food. Well, let's break it down a little smaller than that. Maybe you don't weigh 600 pounds. Um, you know, maybe you're not even doing toxic toys right now. You're trying to become a whole food plant-based. You're trying to become vegan. You're trying to become raw vegan. And whatever it is, some days it's so much easier. You're exhausted. You don't feel like taking the time to prep your food. It's so much easier to go through a drive through Everybody's eating a different way. It's so much easier to join in in their food. Uh, you know, because you can just open up a bag of chips with them. You can just, you know, open a can of Chef Bardee. I don't know. But, you know, it takes effort to make change. It takes effort to truly care for yourself. And depending on your situation, like I said, I weighed 330. Um, you know, two years ago, I was at 279. And uh, praise God, I'm at least 80 pounds below that now. And I'm so grateful for that. One moment, please. Just sneezing as usual. <laughs> anyway, though, so in becoming vegan and striving to be raw vegan, um, there are some days where I just feel like saying, screw it. Like, what's the big deal? I was really good. I, I, can, I can honestly say I don't think I could ingest dead animals. I really don't. But I still have that compromising mind when it's, well, it's just an animal byproduct. I mean, it's just an egg. Um, the animal's not dead. Well, it's just cheese and, you know, milk or whatever. I was never a milk person, but... I certainly justified ice cream by the gallon. And, you know, that's not killing anyone. Like, I'll do that whole dang thing. And then I'm just like, what are we asking here? I mean, I'm asking to choose to live. I'm asking to choose to live healthy. I think sometimes on a plane, when they have people sit near the emergency exit, yeah, there's more leg room, but what are you committing to? Are you literally saying that you are willing to potentially sacrifice yourself to save someone else's life? Are you really going to help people down that chute, um, you know, into the middle of the ocean while you're waiting to go last? <laughs> Sorry, it's just I so get it. You're waiting to go last and, you know, the cabin's on fire. I mean, is the leg room worth it? And it's the same thing. Are you willing? Do you love that I'm having trouble saying, will we? Some days when I'm tired, all of a sudden I sound like a, a wabbit. <laughs> I can speak. Okay. And the funny thing is when I've had apple cider vinegar, oh my gosh, I did it again. When I've had apple cider vinegar, sometimes my mouth does not speak. Well, I don't think it's an allergic reaction, but it is something. Okay, so forgive me because I'm not restarting this video. Anyway, um, really what we're saying is we're choosing wellness. So we're choosing wellness. We're choosing health. We're choosing a high vibrancy. Um, we're choosing to be light in the world. Well, the last guy who was light for the world ended up dead on a cross. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> so like, you have to know. Some days when I'm just like, wait a minute, maybe I should go back to being a zombie like everybody else, because what am I doing? I'm, I'm getting clarity. I'm, I'm choosing life, uh, when everybody else isn't, um, like what is the end game? Dare I say, keep the end game in mind. And you know what? Yes, I am. I really am. 
Um, hopefully I can walk off the planet instead of dying from all of the typical diseases that everybody has. Uh, you know, hopefully I can truly serve, truly serve others to my last breath, which would just be lovely. Um, you know, but I'm just saying on some days I panic and just go, oh, I could easily start eating toxic again and, and be sick with everyone else. Because <laughs> this side of clarity can be scary. Anyway, though, no. Um, when I say, you know, make sure you wait for the miracle. What helps the most is a gratitude journal. And like I've indicated, I have more than one journal. So one of mine is for food, which I happily record my food, record my successes with my food, and record my fall, you know, when I fall. And um, I'm happy to do that. But this one is essentially a gratitude journal. It is telling God, thank you for your goodness in my life. It is uh, recording the miracles because miracles are all around us every single day. Uh, some people get a little too specific on what they want the exact miracle to be and exactly to look like. I'm not sure that's praying right. I don't pray for that specific miracle, but I pray for the grace to actually see the blessing in everything. And I think that in itself is a miracle. I was saying in the beginning that I'm such a miracle as we all are. But the reason I'm a miracle is because I've actually had a very difficult life. I get everyone has their own life. But as I've suggested, I was sexually abused by many, many times. I was raped at 26 years old. I was even molested in a dang movie theater at 29. Like I haven't been spared um, but beyond the sexual, I was whipped to the point of my butt being whelped and not being able to sit down with welts on it, having a handprint on my cheek from being smacked across the face, you know, like all those kinds of things, the verbal abuse of, um, always saying even well before I was heavy, um, that I was way too heavy that, you know, uh, I'd like to love less of you that, uh, too much, like, all those things, just so many things, man. People have always been so dang comfortable to tell me their every thought and opinion regarding me, straight up, straight up. And I was diagnosed with manic depression, you know, at 21 years old. And the lithium, along with the uh, Motrin from insane, insane uh, periods and cramps and all of the stuff that goes with that, uh, led to my kidney failure. And, you know, I've been working to build that back. I suddenly had asthma as an adult because of this toxic planet and all this stuff with asthma, having, um, thyroid and, uh, like all those things being on eight medications as little as three years ago, you know, all of those things. I wake up joyful. I wake up hopeful. I believe in people. I'm in my 25th year of teaching and I still giggle all day. <laughs> I mean, sure, I'm a serious teacher, I am. And, and I promote all my children. Uh, but I also like to wear pajamas on pajama day. And I also like to mentor young teachers who need joy in their life. Um, so I, I just appreciate the miracle. I, there were times in my life, I, like I said, I had suicidal ideations for 10 years. 10 years I woke up every day planning my death. Because life seemed too big. And it seemed very scary to me. And I didn't feel like I had the tools to do it. So I every day would be like, well, we could hang ourselves. Well, how many pills would it take before we never woke up? Well, do you think if we... The interesting thing about that was I was killing myself already the entire time, the most miserable, slow death ever, which of course is being a compulsive overeater who is absolutely drowning myself in fat. I've said before that five times in my adult life, I've gained and lost more than 100 pounds. I thank my body to no end uh, for its ability to uh, accommodate me because wow, We've been through a lot together and, you know, just so many things like that. So 
I just want to encourage people, you know, I'm so sorry for that Bethany person. And I don't know, maybe she pulled it together after the cameras rolled. I don't know. But I get it. I get not being able to see the end game. I get the fear that nothing will ever change. And, and I did share that story before. I'd been injured on Valentine's Day. And like three years in a row, I was injured on Valentine's Day. Once in a car accident, once when an industrial dishwasher exploded, once when um, I had fallen and sprained both arms. And suddenly I was scared to death at that time of year. And someone reminded me that no two days are ever the same. And that, you know, life, even in the sense that I myself grow and change and am different, are, is never the same on any given day. And I had to let that fear go. And I had to look for the miracle. And then all of a sudden those, you know, um, February 14th changed for me, you know, I ended up being engaged on that day. I ended up, you know, celebrating life. And and I, I just want to encourage you guys, if you're waiting on a very specific prayer for the miracle, you might want to zoom out a little. And I had a video on zooming out. You might want to zoom out a little and see the bigger picture. Build the momentum of using that. And it only has to be a couple of words. What is just one thing you saw today? I encouraged a friend who had trouble with her mother to write one thing, just one, one thing she could appreciate. And the thing she appreciated was kind of backwards. It wasn't necessarily about the mother, but that the mother's action resulted in something better in her life. You know what? That's as good as she could do. But from doing one grateful action, you may have the grace to start recognizing other things, which you may start to see as miraculous instead of ordinary. Let me know what you think, people. As always, like if you like, join us if you haven't. Subscribe. Know that it is only 1020 at night and that I have homework. <laughs> so I'm going to find balance. I'm getting a little better. The last couple of nights, I have made it to bed before midnight. Granted, I laid there awake, but still, I was physically in bed before midnight. I'm impressed. Until we talk again, best of all, know that I pray for you and that you're blessed.